The following program is brought to you in part by the Gwendolyn and Henry Baker Charitable Fund. Round up the usual suspects. All right, Mr. DeMille, I'm ready for my close-up. Here we go. Hello, and welcome to Silver Screen Showcase. My name is Jared Malone, and I'll be your host as we take you behind the camera and into the minds of some of Santa Barbara County's most talented filmmakers. My guests today are Jacob and Isaac Siegel Baitner, co-founders of Petalborn Pictures. Now, we're gonna take a look at a clip, but when we return, we'll sit down with the filmmakers themselves and find out more about their creative process. <laughs> took a look at a clip and uh, we've got Jacob and Isaac Siegel Baitner here, the founders of Petalborn Pictures. Welcome to the show guys. Thanks, it's good to be here. Thanks for having us. Excellent. So could you just tell us a little bit about what Petalborn Pictures is? Yeah, um, it's a production company that we founded a couple years ago. Uh, the name is, is actually a literal name uh, because me and Jacob were both taken home from the hospital behind the bike. Uh, as soon as the doctors let us go, my dad, when we were born, took us in a little yellow trailer uh, and towed us home. So pedal born in a literal sense. Um, and we grew up uh, behind the bike. Uh, first on a little trailer, taking summer trips with my parents. They're junior high teachers, uh, or my dad's a junior high age teacher. And he would take kids every summer with my mom to different places around the world. And first we were behind, behind them on trailers, then on a tandem, then on the bike. Um, and that's sort of where we got our first encounter with filmmaking is the little like vacation home videos my dad would make. Um, when we were old enough, we'd start like helping him with the handy cam and talking to him about how he was gonna put it together and what he needed us to film. We'd go ride up and maybe film a couple shots for them. So that's how we really got our start. Um, and then we did a little bit of stuff in junior high and high school taking filmmaking classes, but I think we didn't really get serious about it until the college age. Um, yeah, and then when I was, we were both at UC Berkeley and wanted to spend semesters abroad, and I spent a semester uh, my sophomore year in Rwanda working for a project that designed cargo bikes for coffee farmers. And part of the component of the study abroad program was we had to write this big, long 40-page paper about our experiences. And I knew if I brought a 40 page paper home, my parents might read it, but my friends wouldn't touch it and it would just end up in some professor's drawer somewhere. So I was like, okay, if I wanna share the story with my friends, I need to make a movie. And so I made a movie about Pascal, this coffee farmer who I'd worked with and how the bike had impacted his life and brought it back and showed it at the Santa Barbara Film Festival. And that's when Isaac and I sort of realized there are all these stories about the bicycle and pedal power that even cyclists in the US don't know about and that was sort of how we came up with the idea of Pedalborn Pictures. And our first film was With My Own Two Wheels, which you just saw a clip from that followed a bunch of individuals around the world through a day and looked at how the bike impacts them on a, on a very basic level. So that was the bike and filmmaking were always very tied close together for us. So when it came to starting a company, Pedalborn Pictures was a, a natural choice for a name. Excellent. That's really, that's an amazing story. I mean, to be brought from the hospital on a bicycle and, you know, you must have just this amazing connection to bikes in general. 
And when, when was it the moment in your life where you decided, you know, this means something to me? Did, did it connect to you? Is bicycles mean something to me and the, the, the power that they have? The way that we were raised, I think that the bike, it wasn't like that was ever a realization. We were just brought into the world with that realization as something that was a part of us. And so from there wasn't ever a point where we didn't realize that, I don't think. Every summer we took bike trips. Every Sunday we'd go on bike trips with bike, a bike ride around town to get breakfast. We'd bike to school, even from a really, really young age. So for us, riding a bike is sort of second nature. If we're walking, we're thinking about how we should probably be biking, you know, if we're, that, that's just how we always think. Um, but I think when we saw the power of the bike was when we um, went to Africa and saw how the bike was being used as more than just this adventure tool, more than just a way to see the world or more than a way to get to work, but like as a real essential part of someone's livelihood. I think with, that was the moment for me when I was like, wow, the bike is this incredibly important invention. Um, yeah. right. You know, I had a bicycle growing up and I remember it meant the world to me. I spent every penny paying for it and it was a, a small BMX uh, chromoly bike and I treated it really, you know, like it was like gold. I polished it every time I finished riding it and I remember the effect it had on my life and the freedom that I felt going out and just being on a bike. I couldn't drive but to have the wind in your face and just to have the power to get somewhere faster. Now, what does the bicycle represent in your production company? I mean, it, it represents a type of freedom that so many people don't seem to have. So can you kind of touch upon how that ties in, how bicycles tie into movie making? Yeah, I mean, I think for us, first, the way the bike allows you to see the world is much more intimate than any other form of travel. I mean, our, our family vacations, like Isaac mentioned earlier growing up, were these bike tours with our parents and their students. And when you're going through a country on a bike, people stop and ask you, where are you going? Why do you have this crazy bag on the back? And you get invited into people's homes and you sort of get to see a side of the world that you wouldn't get if you were in a car or a train or obviously airplane flying way overhead. And so I think that kind of translates into the way we like to tell stories. It's the first day we meet someone who we're going to make a film about, we don't even bring the camera. We just go sit down with them and talk and get an idea of who they are and tell them what about their story we want to capture. And then the next morning, we literally go with, no matter whether it's Fred in Zambia or a high school kid in Northern California who's a mountain biker, we go and film a day in their life. Um, and we f get them waking up, brushing their teeth, eating breakfast. And so we try to have this very intimate portrait of the person so that you get to know them at a very basic level regardless of, of what the issue that we're, we're touching on in the film is. And, and, and I think also we take that sort of, you can only ride when it's bright out. There's these natural things to riding a bike that our films have. We don't use a lot of lights. We don't use a lot of studios. We shoot outdoors almost exclusively. Um, and also, back to the literalness of Pedalborn Pictures, we bike to a lot of our shoots. We do, um, we have a long cargo bike that we'll, we'll actually shoot off the back of. So bikes are integral in our filmmaking process too. I think a good majority of our days filming involve biking as well. It's really interesting that you bring that up. You know, one of my favorite films of all time is uh, Vittorio De Sica's Bicycle mm -hmm. Thieves from 1948. And that film just represents I see this allegory to the past and to the, to the present with your production company about what a bicycle can mean to someone's livelihood and especially with my own two wheels. Can you kind of briefly uh, talk about that film and, and how bicycles can affect someone's livelihood? Yeah, so with, with my own two wheels, after going to Rwanda and seeing the impact that it had for this coffee farmer, we wanted to find, we knew there were all these other projects out there that took the bike and empowered people, whether it's girls getting to school, health workers visiting more patients, um, giving employment to disabled people. And so we found these five projects, including BC Centro here in Santa Barbara, and found these individuals within those projects who had been empowered by the bike in some way. And so we really wanted to bring these alternate stories of the bicycle back home to the U.S. to show people who maybe they rode a bike when they were a kid, but they got a car and they, it's sort of fallen out of their lives. They want to show them what the power of the bike can be and how it can empower people all around the world. It's a tool that you don't need 
a lot of other things to do once you get the bike. It's not like a car where you need to be constantly refilling it with gas. It's something that you make an investment which is relatively small compared to other forms of transportation. And it's something that's kind of always there as long as you have the energy to go. You can travel and you can also stack tons of stuff up on the back. You wouldn't, we've seen some ridiculous things on the back of a bike. We've seen like multiple pigs stacked up, still alive, squealing that a farmer is taking to the market. We've seen like dozens of chickens just trying to fly away. Um, you see lots of taxi cabs with the whole family on the back of a bike and they, they see the bike as, as just two wheels that can take things and there's so many things you can do with that when that is sort of what your only choice is. It's just amazing, yeah. Thinking back to, you know, Bicycle Thieves, Italian neorealism, you know, they didn't use a lot of uh, studios, lighting. They, you know, they were very natural and went out in the in the openness to do that. And so that kind of relates to what you're doing, obviously. And uh, it's just, I find that amazing. Now, we're going to take a look at a clip from Single Track High that talks about how a bicycle can really influence and change a young person's life. We'll be right back. It's you know, what's considered the ghetto. Well, my name is uh, Jesus Trejo. I'm a police officer with the city of Sacramento. I'm a head coach for the Sacramento Police Department High School Mountain Biking Program. Nearly half of our kids were at or below the poverty line. Yeah, it's like, oh, okay, another shooting or another homicide. To some of these kids, it's considered the norm. Growing up in Sacramento, the opportunities to leave Sacramento limits are very slim, we just stuck. Before I joined the team, I was I was just like, oh, mountain biking. Oh, only like only like certain amount of people get to do that. I'm like, nah. I, I don't, uh, like I never saw myself doing it, you know. Before I joined the team, I would only ride a bike like a certain amount of blocks, then I would get tired. But then as soon as I joined the team, they started taking us out, like uh, doing laps and laps and laps, and that, that conditioned us even more, making us last more on the bike. That's what I liked about it too, like being able to like go out in the woods and the wilderness and see all these things that I would never see before, instead of just being in the city, you know? Being out there, you feel kind of like Survivor Man for like a split second. <laughs> it's like something, it's like doing something that you don't do every day, something you don't see every day. It's just amazing to see the impact of what a bicycle can have on a young person's life. And what kind of leads me to the next point is why focus on, on young people and what they can do to better the environment themselves and just humanity in general? Why focus on that? Well, I think the, I mean, obviously the youth is the future. You hear that all the time. Um, and with bringing it back to single track high, the reason we made single track high in the first place is we made with my own two wheels and we showed these stories of people using the bike, and people loved it. They saw like, oh, we want to get more bikes to these people. And that was an, an audience reaction all the time. How can we help? How can we get a bike to, to Fred over there in Africa or to Bharati in India? Um, but they wouldn't necessarily make the connection that, oh, maybe I should be using my bike like they're using their bikes. Um, and the developed world, or the undeveloped world, looks to the developed world and thinks this is what we deserve, and they do. So we wanted to come back here and get more people riding bikes here in the States um, so that, you know, if the healthcare worker can eventually get a car, he sees maybe a healthcare worker here on their bike. Um, so we saw the high school age is sort of the age when you fall out of touch with your bike, you know, you're getting your driver's license, maybe it's not cool anymore, um, maybe you don't want to be sweaty when you show up to class. Um, and we wanted to kind of switch that and make the bike cool. And in Northern California, we saw that there was this league where it was a high school sport, where it was cool to ride your bike. Um, so that's why we made single track high, to get kids out on their bikes. Because if you get a kid in high school on their bike still, then that's something that they'll carry with them through college when they can't afford a car, you know, and then into the rest of their life, thinking of it as a tool and as a thing that is a viable option for transportation, for fun, and for all that. And I think in more general sense, 
a lot of our stories have had youth in them because the best way for you to share a story with someone from our generation or younger is to make a movie. And so we've always wanted our stories to be something that we can show to young people as a teaching tool. And they'll see a little bit of themselves up on screen, whether it's identifying with Bharati and, and with my own two wheels, um, a girl in India who's using the bike to get to school, or one of the kids in single track high who races mountain bikes and a kid is like, oh, I wanna race my bike too. And so we've always tried to have some sort of youth element in our pieces when we can because films are a great way to reach out to young people and if they can identify with someone in the film, it has that much more impact for them. That's really cool. I mean, the effect that it can have and just kind of briefly mention, you know, or touch upon the, the theme of bicycles in all of your productions and is it something that needs to be part of a production? <laughs> Will there be avenues that don't involve bicycles? And if not, that's that's fine. I just, you know, I find it really interesting that there's this underlying thread. I think it wasn't intentional. I mean, we made with my own two wheels and at that point had no intention of becoming filmmakers. And then people started asking us at festivals and places where we showed the film, what's your next project? And we're like, oh, next project? We should probably think of something. Um, and that's where we thought of Single Track High. And then we started talking to people and realized that there were all these stories that related to the bike that were new and nobody had told and people wanted to hear. And that's sort of why bikes have tied into all of our projects. It hasn't necessarily been a, a conscious choice, but after making with my own two wheels and after making single track high, we've sort of gotten into this rhythm of telling intimate stories about individuals where the bike plays a big role. And like Isaac mentioned earlier, we've sh we shot a commercial for specialized bicycles off the back of our cargo bike. And so we've sort of developed all these little um, grassroots filmmaking tools that involve filming bikes. And so that's just sort of the way it's happened. And I think right now with how much more environmentally conscious people are becoming and how budget conscious they are. The bike is something that's becoming increasingly popular and even in LA you see a lot more bike infrastructure popping up so that's also trickling over into film and the entertainment industry and you just had Premium Rush come out this last year which total B-movie, total summer action movie but it, it was about bike messengers and that w I don't think that would have happened five years ago so I think there's this growing consciousness about the bicycle and this growing hunger for stories about the bike. And so that's how we've tried to, to make our inroad into film. And also I think we're always kind of coming at documentaries from the socially conscious perspective and trying to make a movie that will have some positive value. But what's great about the bike is no matter the story, the person riding the bike when all is said and done rides the bike for fun. So if it's something they're doing for transportation and we're following them doing that, there can be a moment of this just like pure joy and elation where you go back to that moment when you're on your BMX bike just flying through the neighborhood and you just feel free. And I think it's really nice to be able to tell stories where there can be that serious moment talking about an issue, but then you introduce the intervention and that intervention is also something that they can do for fun, which is kind of a fun thing to be able to carry through all your movies is that moment of like joy and freedom. Then most people who've ever ridden a bike, they know what you're talking about when it comes back to that moment. All right. You know, we have the great fortune of living in Santa Barbara where we're a very bike friendly town. And I can't tell you, you know, as a UCSB graduate, all the bikes in Isla Vista, all the thousands of people on bikes over there. It's this whole networking system and miles of bike tracks. It's just this really cool feeling. And then downtown, to be able to lock your bike up every 10 feet, there's a bike lock, you know, and you feel safe because you can not go park in the structure and have to worry about spending gas and time and all that business. You can just go and be free. There's this great freedom in, in Santa Barbara. We just had Amgen tour come in through here. We were covering that. And so many people came out from the community to support cycling and cyclists in general. And, you know, how do you feel about living in Santa Barbara? Do you call this your home base? <laughs> I, one day I hope to be able to call it home base again. We're actually based up in the Bay Area now. Um, but we periodically come back. We always like to show our films back home in Santa Barbara. We just showed Single Track High at the Libero right after the Amgen tour came through town. It was our biggest screening of Single Track High yet. Um, but Santa Barbara, yeah, it's one of those places where you don't realize how awesome it is to grow up here until you leave. Um, and I love the Bay Area and Northern California, but every time I come home, it's just like, wow, I can go on a mountain bike ride up to the top 
of Lacumbre Peak and then go body surfing in the afternoon and use my bike to get everywhere. And it's, it is really incredible and it's awesome to see the amount of bike awareness and bike infrastructure that's sort of popped up as we've been growing up and seeing what the Bike Coalition and BC Centro have done in the last couple of years to, to get more people in Santa Barbara on bikes. It's, it's pretty cool. Excellent. Well, right now we're going to take a look at another clip and when we return, we'll talk to the filmmakers more about the effects of bicycling and the future plans. great clip you know thank you so much for sharing these with us and uh, it's a pleasure to have you so let's talk about something that's kind of interesting I found in my research um, world bicycle relief can you tell us a little bit about that yeah so one thing we've tried to do with both with my own two wheels and single track high is have people be able to leave the theater with something that they can do next a way that they can get involved whether you're an adult who has a, a real estate or law firm and you want to write a check or you're a kid who wants to smash the piggy bank and, and make a difference. And so with, with My Own Two Wheels, our first film, we looked at these five different developing development projects around the world and we decided that World Bicycle Relief, the project in Zambia, was the one that we wanted to get people involved in after seeing the film. So what they do is they take this specially designed bike, they've had engineers from across the bike industry look at the bike in the developing world and figure out what works, what doesn't, and they've basically decided that a bike in the developing world should have just as much engineering going into it as a top of the line bike here, which makes perfect sense because it's a very purpose built machine. So they've distributed I think over 100,000 of these specially designed, very rugged, very durable, high capacity bikes all over Africa to health workers, to students, um, to businesses, uh, to, so they can have their own micro entrepreneurship programs. And they're basically trying to give people the tools to improve their lives, give them that the fishing rod instead of just the fish. And that's something that we really like and something that we think anybody who sees with my own two wheels can get involved with because a bike through World Bicycle Relief is $134. So a classroom can pool together their resources and sponsor a bike for a student their age in Zambia, or someone can sponsor a whole fleet of bikes. So it's this really cool program that makes a huge impact, but at the same time, it's very accessible and understandable and relatable for people in the US. And that was the logical next step for with my own two wheels and with single track high, we hope that kids come out of it saying, A, I want to ride my bike more, and B, hey, maybe we should start a bike team so that we have a bike team and a baseball team. So we want to have all these next steps that people can, can get involved in and sort of make a difference in their own lives and their community after seeing our films. And just to tag on there, with, with My Own Two Wheels, another next step that we were having at each screening was telling people to get in touch with their local bike kitchen, their bo local bike shop like BC Centro and see if they have an old bike sitting around to kind of both act globally and then also act locally and see if there's something they can do to help out with the bike in their own community. Yeah, that's really cool. You know, my mother is from an African country and I've visited it very uh, many times and, you know, I know that it's not necessarily that they're not on the same time scale or space, you know, a lot of people like to put Africa in its own little place, but really it's just, it's it's harder to get things there. They don't have as many of the freedoms and the, 
the amenities as we do because they're just in such short supply. So the, these types of things that really build entrepreneur companies and help people with their jobs there, you know, it's not, you're not just giving them something and then walking away. You're, mm -hmm. you're giving them something that has a domino effect and it's really going to make a difference in their lives. And it's just interesting to me that it seems like the two of you, that you don't answer to anybody. You, you do the projects that you want to do and you, you pick them. I mean, how do you pick a project and, and what is the future like for Petalborn Pictures? I mean, it's worked out that way so far. We've been really lucky that with, with, with my own two wheels, we got a, a big grant from UC Berkeley. It was the, the Judith Lee Stronach Baccalaureate Prize that basically funded a huge chunk of the film, which was awesome because we never would have been able to travel around the world as two bearded college students with cameras without a huge financial backer. So that was awesome. And then for Single Track High, it almost didn't happen. Um, we were about to pull the plug on the film and then Specialized Bicycle Components, which has been a long supporter of, of getting kids on bikes and specifically high school mountain bike racing, saw the value in having that story told and Mike Sinyard, the founder, said, okay, what's it gonna take to get this story out there? Um, and just funded the whole film. So we've been extremely lucky to find these angel donors that have made these films happen. And our next film that we're looking for an angel donor for right now and hopefully it, it happens that way is um, when we were in Rwanda doing um, one of our family bike trips over the summer this man came up to the car and it was us and a couple middle school kids from Santa Barbara Middle School and he said I want to give you my email address so that we can stay in touch and our dad went to write it down and he's like no I want to do it and he had lost both of his arms just below the elbow and he grabbed the pen and and wrote his email address and his name's Frederick and we slowly got to learn Frederick's story he's about our age he lost both of his arms in the genocide and he now runs a center for disabled people in northern Rwanda so that they can get vocational training and get education because in Rwanda if you're disabled a lot of times you're literally hidden in the closet by your family and since then Frederick has come to Santa Barbara. He uh, goes on bike trips with Santa Barbara Middle School whenever he's back in town. Um, B'nai B'rith, the temple up on the hill, they helped raise enough money so that he could build a preschool that attaches onto the Center for Disabled People so that disabled kids who oftentimes are not sent to school now have a place where they can go and be educated. And Frederick would like to share his story with the world and he wants to ride his bike across Rwanda to show that he is capable of doing this despite what he's gone through and despite the fact that he doesn't have arms here. Um, so that's our next project is we'd like to do that expedition, travel across Rwanda with Frederick and, and make a film that tells his story and hopefully bring it back here to Santa Barbara to share with people. That's really cool. It's just, it's a great thing that you guys are doing and uh, just want to know how can the community contact you and get involved and, and help out? Yeah, Pedalbornpictures.com. Um, you can go there and check out some of the work that we've done, um, some commercial work, some of our documentaries, and we'll keep you up to date on on what we're at and uh, what we're working on. Um, yeah, and email us if you have a story that you think would be interesting about the bike. We always have our ears up seeing what's out there. Um, or if you want to get involved and help us with a future project, um, Yes, shoot us an email and we'd uh, love to talk to you. And we're also uh, on Twitter, we're at Pedalborn, and then we also have a Facebook page as well and, and Instagram where we post pictures from the road and, and from the different projects that we're working on, so you can follow us that way as well. Excellent. Well, Jacob, Isaac, thank you so much for being on the show, taking time out of your busy schedule to come here and uh, do our show. We really appreciate it. Um, you know, you can make a difference, a small, a small but big difference with a small but big item, and that's a bicycle. And today we've learned that, that you know, a bicycle can really change the lives of, of people, a country, and two individuals. So I'm Jared Malone, your host. You're watching Silver Screen Showcase. We'll see you next time.